San Francisco to cover the worst team in Major League Baseball. And let there be no doubt, I'm not talking about the Diamondbacks. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. Comes your way bright and early every weekday morning. If you're into football in or hockey, I also offer up Daily Shots of Steelers and Penguins. The Pirates were 6-4 losers to the Diamondbacks yesterday over in Phoenix. And it really didn't come across as being anywhere near that close. Arizona swept the three-game set. Arizona's won four in a row. The Pirates have lost four in a row. And how does that conversation not dovetail instantly into next year's number one overall pick. If you haven't heard, the name that's associated with that, pretty much by everyone, is Elijah Green, a really promising young hitter who is seen as being something that this past class lacked, meaning a star-type talent, somebody who could potentially grow into something truly special. Now, things change in baseball constantly, especially at that level. It can be injury, it can be attitude, it can just be somebody else rocketing past you out of nowhere at times. It can just be an inexplicable drop-off in performance. This is true across all sports drafts, but it is true times 10 when it comes to baseball. I've not heard anyone suggest, at least not anyone who is responsible, knowledgeable, and informed when it comes to prospects and prospect management, that Green would be that kind of player who'd be worth tanking. And yep, that's that's where we're going to go here. Because that, you know what? That's the conversation. As much as I bristle at that thing coming up, that's what the Pirates deserve to have everyone talking about. After that debacle in Phoenix. That's what they deserve. So we're going to do that. We're going to do that. We're going to talk about tanking and the merits of it. Tanking can come in two different forms. Tanking can come in terms of you know, actually just throwing games, in which case you're the Chicago Black Sox, that's not going to happen in 2021 with all eyes on everything at all times. But then there's the more conventional kind of tanking, in which you just say, listen, this season's shot. We're going to trade Adam Frazier. We're going to trade Tyler Anderson. We're going to trade Richard Rodriguez. Uh, Who else can we trade? (laughs) Who else? (laughs) <laughs> Who else we got? We're going to hang on to Brian Reynolds, Brian Hayes, a couple other guys, and that's about it. Everyone else is available. Well, when that happens and when it bolsters the minor league system, which, to be fair here, is doing incredibly well, when that happens, you're going to leave the Pittsburgh team just bone dry. You're going to leave the Pittsburgh team with nothing. Or close to nothing. If you thought it was bad with just two or three hitters, wait till you see what it's like with one or two. If you thought it was bad with one or two starting pitchers who who look, you know, capable and uh, promising, wait till you see what it's like with, you know, just one or two guys managing the fort. It'll be grisly. It's not inconceivable. It's not inconceivable. With this sweep... With this sweep, the Pirates' record is now 36 and 60. The Diamondbacks are 30 and 68. The Diamondbacks, you have to understand, at one point were so far behind the entire pack that it was seen as nuts that anybody could quote unquote catch them in this regard. But, you know, here it is. Here it is with. A little less than half of the season to go. 
Here it is. This is, is this what this is going to be about? Because that's sure what it looked like on the field in Phoenix. I want it on the record, again, that I am not in favor of this. I feel that the Pittsburgh Pirates, even at this phase of their build, are better served to win and set positive role models throughout their system and for their young players who are already in the fold. I feel there is greater value in that than crossing your fingers for a one or a two in the next draft. And oh, by the way, the Pirates aren't currently lined up at two. There are two other teams, quote-unquote, again, ahead of them in the Orioles and the Rangers. So they'd have to lap the field to get to this number one. I'm not ruling it out. Once these trades are made, I'm not ruling anything out. I think they'll still try on the field. The guys will. That's what they're tasked with. They couldn't care less, the players, whether or not they get an Elijah Green or whatever. I don't really think that the manager or the coaching staff does either because lousy performance at the Pittsburgh level reflects way worse on them and way more strongly on them than anything that's happening in the minors. These guys have to have a self-preservation gear to what it is that they're doing. But you know what? Keep playing like you did all week in Phoenix. You know what? I'll tell you what. Here's what's going to happen. Because this has been a strange team. You watch. They'll take a couple out here. The Giants have the best record. The very best record in the National League at 60-35. and 35. I don't know how they do. I don't know that too many people saw them leading their division, much less towering above the league the way they have, but they have. But they have. And the Pirates seem to give those teams trouble and yet just look awful against Arizona. We'll see. We'll see. You know what? I, I, I'm going to have fun with it either way. I just am. When we come back, just one question. It's time for just one question that's brought to you always on this program by the North Shore Tavern, directly across Federal Street from PNC Park, home to Steak on a Stone, home to multiple televisions tuned in to ball games. If you're looking for a great place to watch the Pirates when they're on the road, check out North Shore Tavern, directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. The question today comes from Scott Chamberlain, who asks, Hey, Dan, is it a no-brainer? that the Buccos buy out Gregory Polanco's club option for $3 million instead of paying his $12.5 million that he'd be due in 2022? The answer to that, Scott, is an emphatic, skywriting level yes. Yes, yes, yes. In fact, in fact, I'm of the mind that they would have bought him out Previously, had there been any option or plausible option to do so, we are now seeing what we had presumed about Greg for a while, and that is that he's got nothing left in that arm. He can't compete in the field at this level any longer i'm sure he could get by in the minors with that arm you know if you all you got to do is be able to rainbow it into the cutoff man but we're seeing again and again and again and we saw it this week in phoenix as well where teams just go they just go as soon as they see that the ball has hit the right field uh, they're going to run through stop signs at third base they're going to do whatever they have to just to keep running because they know he's not going to be able to get the ball in uh, that's a fatal flaw. That's a fatal flaw for someone who's already got a big one in that he's only hitting around 200. There's no benefit to hanging on to him. There really wasn't much of a benefit to hanging on to him 
this season, except for the fact that the Pirates had absolutely nobody, absolutely nobody to play the corner outfield spots. We did see this coming in Bradenton. It came to pass. It was even uglier maybe than, than a lot of us had thought it would be. Ben Gamble came along to you know, make things look a little bit better. But I, I'll tell you this much, Scott. Once Colin Moran returns and he's back at first base, John Nagowski's not going to sit. And I, I, I always feel guilty when I talk about Nagowski. I feel like I, I need to preface it every single time by saying he's not part of the future, he's not part of the future. Well, he's here now, okay? He's here now, so we can talk about him. He's not going to sit. The guy's hitting two or three hits every single time he plays. He's not going to sit for Gregory Polanco, who can't do anything other than hit a massive, monstrous home run each week. This is, this is the time where you start making these kinds of decisions. Now, ideally, the Pirates would have much easier decisions like Rodolfo Castro would be ready for the major leagues, and you would say, all right, Greg, see ya. We're going to let this kid play. He's not. He's just not. He had the wonderful weekend in New York, and hats off to him, but he spent the whole year in A. He's going to need seasoning in AAA. He'll benefit from seasoning in AAA. There's no rush. And there just isn't anybody else. You've seen Jared Oliver. Do you want to see more of Jared Oliver? I don't. So I, I think Greg is going to finish out this season with the Pirates. I don't think you're going to see them make any kind of weird, drastic moves here, like you know, sending him packing. But I'll repeat, doesn't mean he has to play. Doesn't mean he has to be a regular in the lineup. If your corner outfielders are Gamel and Nogowski, no, you're not winning any Baseball America awards for future prospects by, by achieving that, but you're at least putting your best possible outfield around Brian Reynolds and giving your team the chance to you know, finish out in somewhat respectable fashion. And, and I think that stuff does matter. I really do. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. Again, I'm here in San Francisco. I'm here to cover the series against the Giants. I am not expecting good things. Have you seen where the Giants are in the standings? Have you seen that? My goodness. We'll have another one of these tomorrow. Hey, everybody, thanks for listening. Please subscribe to our DK Pittsburgh Sports channel, and don't forget to hit the bell to get notified every time we post a new video or podcast.